Distributed Database System presented by Rupali Banerjee. So today our topic is Parallel Database. What is Parallel Databases? Now it is, organization need to handle a huge amount of data with a high data transfer rate. For such requirement, the client server or centralized system is not efficient. With the need to improve the efficiency of the system, the concept of the parallel databases comes in picture. A parallel database system seeks to improve the performance of the system through parallelizing concept. So, what is the need of parallel databases? Multiple resources like CPUs and disk are used in parallel. The operations are performed simultaneously as opposed to serial processing. A parallel server can allow access to a single database by users on multiple machines. It also performs many parallelization operations like data loading, query processing, building indexes, and evaluating queries. Introduction to Parallel Databases Sometimes the client server and centralized system is not much efficient to handle huge amount of data with high data transfer rate. Some companies need to handle huge amount of data with high data transfer rate. The client server and centralized system is not much efficient. The need to improve the efficiency gave birth to the concept of parallel databases. Parallel database system improves performance of data processing using multiple resources in parallel. Like multiple CPUs and disk used parallelly. See the figure, multiple CPUs and disk used parallelly and they are connected through intercommunication network. It also performs many parallelization operations like data loading, query processing, etc. Goals of parallel databases. First, improve performance. The performance of the system can be improved by connecting multiple CPUs and disks in parallel. Many small processors can also be connected in parallel. That is, by connecting multiple resources like CPU and disk in parallel, we can significantly increase the performance of the system. Next, improve availability of data. Data can be copied to multiple locations to improve the availability of data. That is, in the parallel database, nodes have less contact with each other. So, the failure of one node does not cause for failure of the entire system. These amount to significantly higher database availability. For example, if a module contains a relation, that is the table in database, which is unavailable, then it is important to make it available from another module. Next. Improve reliability. Reliability of system is improved with completeness, accuracy, and availability of data. When one site fails, the execution can continue with another available site which is having a copy of data. That is making the system more reliable. And the last point is provide distributed access of data. Companies having many branches in multiple cities can access data with the help of Parallel Database System Parameters for Parallel Databases Some parameters to judge the performance of parallel databases are Response time It is the time taken to complete a single task for a given time. Next, speed up in parallel databases Speed up is the process of increasing degree of parallelism that is increasing degree of resources to complete a running task in less time. So, the ability to execute the task in less time by increasing the number of resources is called speed up. The time required for running task is inversely proportional to the number of resources. Speed up in parallel database. Speed up is defined as the ratio between the runtime with one processor and the runtime using multiple processors. We can say that speed up equals to time original by time parallel. Time original means time required to execute the task using one processor divided by time parallel means 
time required to execute the task using multiple processors. So, it measures the performance improvement gained using multiple processor instead of a single processor and is calculated using this formula. So, the formula is speed up equals to time 1 by time m. Time 1 is the time it takes to execute a task using only one processor and time m is the time it takes to execute the same task using m number of processors. So, this is the ideal speed up curve. Now, take one example. Following figure shows a query that takes 4 minutes to complete using one processor. This query takes 4 minutes to complete using one processor, but that makes only 1 minute to complete using 4 processors. So, what is speed up? Speed up equals to from the formula it is 4 minutes by 1 minute that is 4. So, speed up is 4 by 1 that is 4. In this case, the speed up is 4 multiplying the number of processor by 4 cause the query to finish in one fourth of the time. Unfortunately, such an ideal result is seldom achieved in our real life. Speed up can be linear or sublinear. What is linear speed up? Speed up is linear if the speed up is n. That is, the small system elapsed time is n times larger than the large system elapsed time. So, n is the number of resources, say CPU. Take one example. If a single machine does the job in 10 seconds and if parallel machine means 10 single machines, does the same job in 1 second, then the speed up is 10 by 1, that is 10. And it is linear because the speed up is achieved due to the 10 times powerful system. Sublinear speed up. Speed up is sublinear if speed up is less than n, which is usual in most of the parallel system. So, linear speed up is n, where n is the number of resources. See the graph. Speed up is sublinear if speed up is less than n. Now, some useful discussions. If the speed up is n, that is linear, then it means the expected performance is achieved. If the speed up is not equal to n, then two cases are possible. Case one is if speed up greater than n, then it means the system performs more than it is designed for. The speed up value in this case would be less than 1. And case 2 is if speed up less than n, then it is sublinear. In this case, the denominator that is the large system elapsed time is more than the single machine's elapsed time. And third one is scale up in parallel database. Scale up is the ability to keep performance constant that is response time constant when number of processes or transactions and resources like CPU memory increases proportionally. So, if the job size or transaction volume increases, then how we can retain the response time? We can retain the response time by adding additional processors and disk. So, scale up is the ability of an application to retain response time as the job size or the transaction volume increases by adding additional processors and disk. Take one example. There is a system of single processor that supports a workload of 100 transactions per minute. And another system of four processor that support a workload of 400 transactions per minute. So, response times are same for both the cases. So, formula for scale up. Scale up equals to volume n by volume 1. So, what is volume n? It is the transaction volume executed in a given amount of time using m processors. And volume 1 is the transaction volume executed in the same time using only one processor. So, we already discussed one example. So, what is the scale up? Scale up equals to 400 by 100. So, scale up is 4. 
This scale up is 4 is achieved with 4 processor. This is an example of ideal linear scale up. Types of question comes in your university exam. Today, everybody interested in storing the information they have got. Even small organization collect data and maintain mega databases. Though the databases eat space, they really helpful in many ways. For example, they are helpful in taking decisions through a decision support system. To handle such a voluminous data to conventional centralized system is a bit complex. It means even simple queries are time consuming queries. The solution is to handle those databases through parallel database systems where a table or database is distributed among multiple processors possibly equally to perform the queries in parallel. Such a system which share resources to handle massive data just to increase the performance of the whole system is called parallel database system. We have to learn certain architecture to handle parallel database system. So now we will learn parallel database architecture. Types of parallel database architecture. Shared memory system. In shared memory architecture, single memory is shared among many processors. See different processors are there. Several processors are connected through an interconnection network with main memory and disk setup. Here interconnection network is usually a high speed network may be bus, maze or hypercube which makes the data sharing that is transporting easy among the various components processor, global memory or disk. So, Shared memory system uses multiple processor which is attached to a global shared memory via intercommunication channel or communication bus. Shared memory system have a large amount of cache memory at each processor so the referencing of the shared memory is avoided. If a processor performs a right operation to memory location, the data should be updated or removed from that location. Advantages of shared memory system. It is simple to implement. It establishes effective communication between processors through a single memory address space. And it leads to less communication overhead. Data is easily accessible to any processor. One processor can send message to other efficiently. Disadvantages. Waiting time of processor is increased due to more number of processor. That is addition of processor would slow down the existing processors. Another is bandwidth problem. Higher degree of parallelism cannot be achieved due to the reason that all the processors share the same interconnection network to connect the memory. This causes bottleneck in interconnection network, especially in the case of bus interconnection network. So degree of parallelism is limited here. More number of parallel processes might degrade the performance. Shared disk system. In shared disk architecture, disk are shared among all the available processors and also all the processors have their own private memories. So see the figure. Shared disk system uses multiple processors which are accessible to multiple disk via intercommunication channel and every processor has its local memory. Each processor has its own memory so the data sharing is efficient. Each system built around this system are called as clusters. Advantage of shared disk system. Fault tolerance is achieved using shared disk system. Failure of any processor should not stop the entire system. If a processor or its memory fails, the other processor can complete the task. This is achieved using shared disk system. Disadvantages Shared disk system has limited scalability 
as large amount of data travels through the interconnection channel. If more processors are added, the existing processors are slowed down. Shared nothing disk system. In shared nothing architecture, every processor has its own memory and disk setup. This setup may be considered as set of individual computers connected through interconnection network using regular network protocols and switches to share data between computers. This architecture is used in the distributed database system. In shared nothing parallel database system implementation, we insist the use of similar nodes that are homogeneous system. But in case of distributed database system, we may use heterogeneous nodes. So we can say that each processor in the shared nothing system has its own local memory and local disk. Processors can communicate with each other through intercommunication channel. Any processor can act as a server to serve the data which is stored on local disk. Advantages Number of processors and disk can be connected as per the requirement in shared nothing disk system. Shared nothing disk system can support for many processors which makes the system more scalable. Here, the design is flexible to add more number of computers. Disadvantages Data partitioning is required in shared nothing disk system. Data partitioning means a large table is divided into small parts and it is required in shared nothing disk system. And non-local disk accesses are costly. That is, if one server receives the request, if the required data not available, it must be routed to the server where the data is available. It is slightly complex and also communication cost involved in transporting data among the computers. So, cost of communication for accessing local disk is much higher. Next topic is parallel query processing. Different queries or transactions can be run in parallel with each other. Means, what is query parallelism? Executing database query or queries in parallel. The concept of parallelism can be exploited in executing multiple database queries in parallel. Two techniques are there for query evaluation in parallel. They are inter-query parallelism and inter-query parallelism. We will learn each and every technique in detail. Inter-query parallelism. In inter-query parallelism, different queries or transactions execute in parallel with one another. This form of parallelism can increase transactions throughput. The response time of individual transactions are not faster than they would be if the transaction were run in isolation. Thus, the primary use of inter-query parallelism is to scale up a transaction processing system to support a more significant number of transactions per second. Thus, this technique allows to run multiple queries on different processors simultaneously. Execution of multiple queries in parallel by dividing the workload like each individual query is assigned with individual processors, etc. Take one example. If there are six queries, each query will take three seconds for evaluation. Thus, the total time taken to complete evaluation process is 18 seconds. In case of inter-query parallelism, it is achieved only in three seconds because each query runs in parallel. However, inter-query parallelism is difficult to achieve every time. Take another example. There are three queries. Select star for EMP, select star from department where manager name is Steve, and select furniture name cost from furniture. Three queries are there, three different queries. Inter-query parallelism is about how would we execute all the above queries simultaneously by using parallel servers so that each transaction need not wait for the other to complete. That is inter-query parallelism. Next, inter-query parallelism. Inter-query parallelism defines the execution of a single query in parallel on multiple processors and disk. Using inter-query parallelism is essential for speeding up long-running queries. Here, 
each query is run sequentially. So in this technique, query is divided into subqueries. One single query is divided into subqueries, which can run simultaneously on different processor. So this will minimize the query evaluation time. Inter-query parallelism improves the response time of the system. Here, execution of a single query is done in parallel by dividing the workload among various processors. For example, if we have six queries, each can take three seconds to complete. So, the total time to complete the evaluation process is 6 into 3, 18 seconds. But we can achieve this task in only 3 seconds using intra query evaluation. In intra query evaluation, here query is divided into sub queries. So, we can achieve this task in only 3 seconds. Take another example. Consider this query, select star from EMP comma department where EMP dot DNO equals to department dot DNO. Inter-query parallelism is about how would we perform the join operation of the given query in parallel using multiple processors. Our next topic is data partitioning strategies in parallel database system. Data partitioning distributes data over a number of processing elements. Each processing element is then executed simultaneously with other processing elements thereby creating parallelism. Data partitioning can be physical or logical data partitioning. So, partitioning the tables or databases is very important step in parallelizing the database activities. By partitioning the data distributed equally into many different processors workload, we can achieve better performance, better parallelism of the whole system. Partitioning strategies. There are various partitioning strategies proposed to manage the data distribution into multiple processors evenly. Let us assume that in our parallel database system, we have n processors from P0 to Pn minus 1 and n disk from D0 to Dn minus 1 where we partition our data. The value this n is chosen according to the degree of parallelism required. The partitioning strategies are round robin partitioning, hash partitioning and range partitioning. We will learn each and every partitioning in detail. First, round robin partitioning. It is the simplest form of partitioning strategy. Here, the data distributed into various disks in the fashion that first record into the first disk, second record into the second disk and so on. So, let us start with the following table, employee table. This is our employee table. Employee table instance has 14 records and every record stores information about the name of the employee, his or her work rate and the department name. Assume that we have three processors namely P0, P1 and P2 and three disks associated with those three processors namely D0, D1 and D2. So three processors P0, P1, P2 and three disk D0, D1 and D2. In round robin strategy, we partition records in a round robin manner using the function i mod n, where i is the record position in the table and n is the number of partitions or disk. In our case, it is three. So, on the application of partitioning technique, first record goes to D1, second record goes into D2. Third record goes into D0. Fourth record goes into D1 and so on. So, after distribution of records, we will get the following partition. First see, records 3, 6, 9 and 12 goes to partition number 0. What is the remainder? 3 mod 3, it is 0. 6 mod 3, it is 0. 9 mod 3 and 12 mod 3 are 0. So, first record goes to partition number 1 because see, see record number 1 
1 mod 3 it is 1 4 mod 3 it is 1 7 mod 3 it is 1 in this way record number 1 4 7 10 and 13 goes to partition number 1 in the same way record number 2 5 8 11 14 goes to partition number 2 because 2 mod 3 it is 2 5 mod 3 it is 2 that is the remainder it is 2 so record number 2 5 8 11 and 14 goes to partition number 2 our next topic is hash partitioning this strategy identifies one or more attributes as partitioning attributes we need a hash function which is carefully chosen which takes the identified partitioning attributes as the input to hash function take one example let us take grade attribute of the employee table to explain hash function. So, hash function is h grade equals to grade mod n, where grade is the value of grade attribute of a record. n is the number of partitions, in our case it is 3. So, what is hash partitioning? For example, the grade of Smith is 1 while hashing the function shows partition 1. That is 1 mod 3 equals to 1. So, grade of Smith is 1. So, 1 mod 3 it is 1. So, Smith is in partition number 1. Take another example, Blake. Blake. In case of Blake, grade is 4. So, 4 mod 3 it is 1. So, Blake is in partition number 1. Take another example. Say Miller. Miller grade is 2. So, 2 mod 3 it is 2. So, Miller is in partition number 2. Take another example. Turner. Grade of Turner is 3. So, 3 mod 3 it is 0. So, Turner is in partition number 0. In this way, hash partitioning is done. Range partitioning. In range partitioning, we identify one or more attributes as partitioning attributes. Then we choose the range partition vector to partition the table into n disk. The vector is the values present in the partitioning attribute. So, take one example. Let us consider grade of employee table to partition under range partitioning. For applying range partition, we need to first identify partitioning vector. Let us choose the following vector as range partitioning vector for our case. The vectors are 2, 4. According to the vector, the records having the grade value 2 and less will go into partition number 0. So, grade value 2 and less will go into partition 0. See here, grade value is 2 or less. Greater than 2 and less than or equal to 4 will go into partition 1. See, greater than 2 and less than or equal to 4. And all other values that is greater than 4 will go into partition number 2. So, in this way, we can do range partitioning. Now, see, question comes in your university exam. And our last topic is parallel versus distributed database. The main difference between distributed and parallel database is that the distributed database is a system that manages multiple logically interrelated databases distributed across a network. While the parallel database is a system in which multiple processors execute and run simultaneously. Recall the definition. What is distributed database? Data is physically stored across several sites. Each site is managed by an independent DBMS. And what is parallel database? Machines are physically close to each other that is same server room. Multiple processors are handling the database. Database is shared and partitioned. Now the difference, in case of parallel database, multiple processors execute the database operation in parallel. And in case of distributed database, multiple sites are working on a database which distributed among them. Here, processors are tightly coupled and located at a single premise. And in case of distributed database, the sites are separated geographically. 
in case of parallel database nodes are connected through lan so high speed and in case of distributed database sites are connected through wan so speed is low in case of parallel database it supports shared resource management as the nodes are sharing the database but in case of distributed database no shared resource management is required parallel database supports three types of architecture shared memory shared disk and shared nothing architecture we already learned about this architecture in our previous slide and in case of distributed database it supports one architecture that is shared nothing architecture parallel database can handle complex database queries but distributed database works only for simple queries that it is not sharing any resource in case of parallel database maintained by a single database administrator and distributed database maintained by a separate database administrator for each site in case of parallel database all nodes works on a single policy but in case of distributed database sites are located at different location so each site has its own different policies now pause the video and think of this scenario and answer the kind of database architecture we need to implement i am giving 5 seconds to think so a nationalized bank with its various branches across the country it is the example of distributed database a swaggy food delivery service provider also the example of distributed database a restaurant with three section as vegetarian and non vegetarian and bar so it is the example of parallel database now see question comes in your university exam for getting more and more updates please please like share and subscribe my channel that's all for today thank you